Hello once again and welcome back to the Geodynamics video lectures on plate driving forces. In this lecture number three we're going to talk about the onset of thermal convection and the way that we can calculate when thermal convection would occur in a fluid. And we'll do this by introducing something called the Rayleigh number which is a number that can be used basically to calculate the conditions under which a fluid will begin to convect, and in our case, we'll look at an example for convection of the mantle. Now, the picture we're looking at looks something like this figure over here on the left side. We're going to consider a fluid that's heated at its base to T1 and cooled at the top to T0. And in this scenario, the fluid will begin to convect if the thermal buoyancy becomes larger than the viscous forces that resist fluid flow. And uh, in this case, if the temperature difference between the two sides, between T1 and T0, is relatively small, convection will not occur. And then in that scenario, our difference in or our velocities for advection in the x and y direction will be zero. Temperature won't change with time, so we can ignore any kind of transient temperature change and temperatures also won't vary along the x-axis here because the fluid's not convecting and so in that case the heat transfer equation basically reduces to something like this where the second derivative of temperature um, in the y direction is equal to zero and this tc in this case is just indicating that this is conductive heat transfer because it's not uh, convecting. Now, if we consider the boundary conditions of T equals T0 at Y equals minus B over 2, so you can see along here on the Y axis that minus B over 2 is up here, and T equals T1 at B over 2, which is down here, then the solution to the equation we just saw on the previous slide looks something like this. It's simply a linear change in temperature across the thickness of the fluid. And in this case, um, you know, this is of course a relatively simple relationship. Uh, the thing to note here is that B is the thickness of the fluid. Now we would predict that convection would occur when the temperature T just begins to exceed the conductive temperature Tc. So if the temperature gets warmer than we predict by, for the temperature by conduction alone, then we expect convection to, uh, to begin. And in this case, uh, we can then calculate a extremely small temperature difference T prime that's exactly equal to the temperature um, T minus the temperature due to convection or sorry to conduction alone. Now that temperature difference um, T prime can basically now be inserted into the heat transfer equation we saw in the previous lecture and uh, as well as the force balance equations that we saw um, for this 2D uh, incompressible viscous fluid. So this would have been the previous um, set of equations we saw in the last video lecture. And um, after a bit of algebra, again, that I won't uh, present for you, we can uh, come up with something of a reference number here called the Rayleigh number. That's another one of these dimensionless numbers that's uh, quite useful. So in this case, for the fluid that's undergoing um, no internal heating, so there's no radiogenic heat production, the Rayleigh number equation looks like this, where we have a reference density rho naught times g times this is alpha v, which again is that coefficient of volumetric uh, thermal expansion. Our temperature difference, T1 minus T0, times the th thickness of the fluid cubed divided by the viscosity times the thermal diffusivity. So there's a bunch of terms in there, and uh, the question is, well, how is this useful? Well, it's useful in the sense that it allows us to calculate when convection would be expected to begin. And um, so here we would expect to see, for a given um, geometry of the system that we were just looking at, we'd expect to see instability and convection when the Rayleigh number is greater than the stuff over here on the right side. So you can see here uh, a few 
different things. Um, there's, of course, some pies in here. B, again, is the thickness of the fluid. And then there's a lambda in here. And the lambda term is reflecting the wavelength of the convection. And so that has something to do um, with sort of how widely spaced these convection cells would be. And so, um, you know, that's going to be something depending on the geometry of the system you're looking at. We could say here that basically the fluid's going to be stable if the Rayleigh number is smaller than this as well, and unstable if the Rayleigh number is greater than that. And so what we see then is that there's a critical Rayleigh number we can calculate that's exactly equal to uh, this term here. And so our critical Rayleigh number equation is basically this same thing here. And that's the point at which convection is just predicted to begin. So then what we have over here on the, the figure is um, some Rayleigh numbers that are calculated in this line dividing the stable and unstable. So it's kind of a contour of the Rayleigh number. And for a given um, system, we could see that there's a minimum in the Rayleigh number uh, at a lambda equal to 2 times the square root of 2 times b. So that's the spacing we might expect to have for convection cells for a given thickness of fluid. Uh, is that we'd expect the cells to be spaced about 2 times the square root of 2 times the fluid thickness. Now, if we consider a situation that's maybe more realistic for the mantle, uh, that would be one in which the Rayleigh number calculation includes uh, internal heat production. And um, so in this case, this fluid's heated from uh, within itself, and the Rayleigh number equation is a little bit different. Uh, we, had, again, have this coefficient of volumetric expansion and reference density acceleration due to gravity. Here now is H, which is the heat production per unit mass. The thickness of the fluid to the fifth power, and then that's divided by the thermal conductivity times the viscosity times the thermal diffusivity. And so this then would be something that's more appropriate for considering the Rayleigh number for the mantle. And that's what I'd like you to do at this point. So for one of these um, internally heated fluids, the critical Rayleigh number is 2,772. And so uh, with that in mind, I'd like you to go ahead and calculate the Rayleigh number for the epoch mantle and the Rayleigh number for the whole mantle and then answer the question of should it convect. So uh, you've got a bunch of variable values that are listed down here at the bottom. Just be careful for the thermal diffusivity that you convert that to meters squared per second. And uh, go ahead and plug in your numbers and come back when you have some values for the Rayleigh numbers for the upper mantle and the whole mantle. Okay, so should it convect? Well, by my calculations, it should convect without any question. The upper mantle Rayleigh number I calculated using a thickness of 660 kilometers and found that uh, the value is about 1.3 times 10 to the 6, obviously much greater than the critical Rayleigh number. If you plug in then a much larger thickness for the whole mantle, in this case I used 2,780 kilometers. I did that based on a 2,880 kilometer thick mantle minus 100 kilometers of lithosphere. Doesn't really matter. You could put in 3,000 kilometers or 2,500 kilometers. You're still going to find a very large Rayleigh number. In this case, about 1.76 times 10 to the 9. Obviously, again, much bigger than the critical Rayleigh number. Okay, so uh, now it's time to take the quiz. And this will be our last kind of uh, mantle convection directly uh, related lecture. And then we'll move on to talking about plate driving forces in the next video lecture.